MachineTutorials.com. Yo, what's good? This is St. Joe, MachineTutorials.com, here with a video that will hopefully help some of you Ableton Live users that are used to recording machine real time in the Ableton Live. You know, with Machine 2.0, they changed a lot of stuff with the MIDI. And so I wanted to kind of give you a workaround that will kind of give you a little bit of your workflow back. Of course, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close in terms of being able to give you your workflow without going into MIDI mode and, you know, just all that crazy stuff. So I want to show you some stuff. So make sure you kind of pay attention. If you need to stop and rewind and different stuff like that, do that. So you can see, for starters, we got a couple external instrument tracks that we're going to use. So let's say you want to use those two tracks. The first thing I want to do is load a kit that I want to trigger. So let's pick, let's just do, let's just do this kit here. So let's say I want to trigger this kit. So let's say we want to give this an input channel. So you want to go to the group and the channel section and you can do this directly from the mixer as well. And for the input, I want to activate it and I want to give it a channel. I'm going to give this one channel two. I'm going to say channel two and I'm going to change my root note to C3 and you'll see why in a minute. So this is kind of similar to how I showed you with the drag and drop and how you got to set up the stuff. So if you wanted to, you would go in and we're going to basically make another group that is going to trigger this group. It's going to go into Ableton and then come back into machine and trigger the group. And you're not going to get any issues in terms of, you know, the sensitivity that you kind of lose when you go into MIDI mode and everything. And then plus, you know, it's not as difficult or, you know, workflow breaking as switching between two different instances, which I've tried that way as well. So just, you know, I've been messing around with this for a while, just looking for the best way that I think would be beneficial to everyone. And this is the way that I think works the best. So let's say we got this, you would actually go in and you would have to go over to the sound section, make sure you're on the channel output, and you would set each one of these pads to send the MIDI to the host, you would give it a MIDI channel. And then as you go up in the pads, you would transpose it so it sends on the proper note. You don't want to have to do that every single time, of course. So what I suggest is doing it once, setting it up, and then saving it as a kit in machine. And you can see if I go over to my user section, I got a little utility section, and I got a host MIDI group. So what I'm going to do is just load that. And you can see it's got all my pads already transposed. Everything's set to go to the host. And then what, all I need to do is select everything. Do a select, select all the pads and just change my MIDI channel anytime I need to use it. So this one, I'm gonna set to one. We're pretty much ready to go. And then one more thing you wanna do, especially if you're using multiple groups, is you wanna go over here to this group, the actual MIDI group on its input, you wanna activate the MIDI input. That way it's only gonna, you know, you don't get any feedback or any craziness because you'll see as we start adding groups, Anytime, let's say if I was focused on this group, it would receive any type of MIDI. But if we just set it to receive, you know, I'll just set it to the same channel. You could leave it to all if you're only using one group. But since we're going to, I'm going to show you how to use multiple groups. I'm going to just put this on the same channel as the output because it's not going to be receiving anything at all. We don't want it to. So I set that right there. So now I'm pretty much ready to go. Also, what I like to do is go in and name this one so I know what channel that's on and I know you know it's easy to look at and then I also like to color code it just so it's easy to look at on the controller I know which ones are my actual groups and which ones are my MIDI groups give them the same color let's say we want to do green so I know looking at that that it's a MIDI group but the thing that I really want to show you is make sure you come over here into your external instrument so now we're gonna go MIDI from machine and we're gonna click machine right here and then down here MIDI is going to go to machine but right here the channel you want to send on is going to match whichever kit you're trying to trigger remember we gave this MIDI channel 2 for the group so we're going to set that to 2 and then your output is going to be set to 2 by default so what you can do is go in and actually just set up your group output to go to 2 but now you're pretty much ready to go. If I come over here, I'll actually be able to trigger it. And you can see that's the actual MIDI going in. And then another thing I want to show you is 
here's the regular group. So this is the regular the regular machine group. I want to show you that the, the MIDI and the, the pad sensitivity and the response is the same. So that's the regular one. If I switch over to my MIDI group or my MIDI host group, whatever you want to call it. So you can see switching between the two, you don't get that issue that you normally get when you go into MIDI mode to, you know, when it's, it kind of messes with the pad sensitivity. And also, I like this way because it's easy to switch back and forth. If I want to go in, you know, add effects, you know, use the mixer, all that different stuff, it's really quick to do that. And then I know any time that I'm ready to record, I just go into my MIDI group. And that's why I say you should color code it, especially when you start using more. Now, the only thing is, of course, you're not going to get you know, use of all 16 MIDI channels this way. But again, that's what a workaround is all about. And hopefully this can kind of give you a little bit of your workflow back that you lost with Machine 2.0 when using it inside of a DAW. So I just want to show you that it actually worked. Just record a little quick, let's do a little four bar or something. So we'll record a, a quick little four bar and then I'll add another group just to kind of show you how that works. So you can see all my MIDI data is in there, it's on the proper notes, and there's no MIDI feedback or anything going on. Just want to make sure you understand how to set it up. So let's do another one. I'll go and load one of these chords. Let's just ran, i just pick this one here. So let's say I want to do that one. So remember, you want to be in the group, and you want to turn the input. I'm going to set this one to, let's do four. Kind of go every other one. So I'm going to go four because remember, you're basically going to use two MIDI channels for each group that you load. I'm put this on C3. And then I'm going to go over and load my little host MIDI utility. I'm going to load that one right here. And I know I'm going to put this one on channel three. So three. And I'm going to change it. Of course, you can save it with the color and make machine loaded with the proper color every time. But, you know, it just depends on how you want to work and, and what colors you want to use. But I, I definitely suggest making all your MIDI channels or your MIDI groups the same color so it's really easy to look at. And it's just easy to keep track of. So let's say I got that. Remember, for your input, I'm going to just set this one to 3 for the group just so it doesn't trigger you know from any MIDI coming into machine it's only going to be looking for MIDI on channel 3 which we're not sending any MIDI into machine on channel 3 so it's not going to receive any MIDI feedback or anything and then remember you come over to your output for the sounds you can see right here it's already set to 2 but I know I want it to be on 3 so I'm going to select them all and just change that to 3 and I'm pretty much ready to go because I saved it with the transpose so that's already ready to go so then you come over to your external instrument again. Remember, you want to come up here, set machine. Then you want to come down here, MIDI 2 machine, what channel? The channel needs to match whatever this group is. So you can go in there and rename the group and, you know, set it for whatever MIDI channel you need so it's easy to look at. Or if you remember, that's fine. Or you just need to go over there and quickly look at it. You can do that. But I remember I set that one to 4. So I'm going to go over here and put it to 4, and I know I want my output to come out of 3. So I would go over here and give my audio output, send it to 3. So now we come over here and make sure the, the audio is coming in properly. So that's the actual kit. Now if I go over here and actually MIDI enable or record enable it and go over to the MIDI channel. pad sensitivity is identical because it's still in machine mode so basically what you're doing is you're using two groups per group in machine and you're sending you're setting up one to be basically a MIDI output group 
and it's just sending MIDI into Ableton and back into Machine on a different channel. And this gets around the MIDI feedback issue that you get in pretty much any DAW. This does work in some other DAWs, and I'll be doing videos for a couple of other ones just to show that for the other users. But again, I know a lot of people that use Ableton this way, and you like record Machine in real time, and you don't like going into MIDI mode, and you want to be able to quickly, you know, record, and then if you need to actually adjust your samples or, you know, do whatever you need to do, you want to be able to do that. So with this method, I find it's the closest to giving us that that original workflow that we're used to because you can just quickly switch back over to the actual kit and adjust it and everything and then switch back over to record so again I'm gonna just go in and record something really simple just so you can see that the MIDI data does get recorded and there's no MIDI feedback or anything so let's see So as you can see, like I said, hopefully this workaround kind of helps you out in the meantime until hopefully we get some type of update to make it a little bit more seamless. But again, the main thing, I highly suggest you go in and create a blank group and set up the, the host MIDI thing, name it, save it as a group and machine so that you can quickly pull it up. And you don't have to set it up every time. And just remember, every time you set up a kit that you want to trigger, then you want to load that host to MIDI and you want to set them up on different channels. I just kind of follow the channel. So I know that my first one is going to be channel one and that first kit is going to be channel two. I know my second one is MIDI channel three and then I'm going to be triggering the next kit on channel four. And then remember, just to kind of go over it again, if you want to come down here and look on your input, I say just give it the same channel as you're triggering it on. That way it doesn't trigger because you're not sending anything into machine on that channel. So you want to do that, give it that channel. You don't have to worry about this right here because this is just the MIDI one, remember. And then remember you come over here under your output MIDI and everything's already ready ready to go. You got your transpose and you got your channel, you're sending it on, you're sending it into the host. And then for your actual kits, you just actually give those a whatever MIDI channel you want to trigger them on. So for the group input, you activate it. You can see this one's four and make sure you set it to C3. If that's how you set up your group, if you set up your, your MIDI, you know, group to trigger on C1, that's fine. Then just make sure you set this to C1. I find it easier to just set it to C3. And that's just how that's just how I'm used to working inside the machine. So that's what it is so of course if you got any questions let me know i know it might seem a little confusing at first but I, I guarantee you if you watch it and you set it up once you'll get it and it'll make sense and it'll kind of fit into your workflow again like i said i've messed with a lot of different ways to record midi into your doll and i didn't want to show you until i found a way that i thought would be a little bit helpful to everybody and you know made the most sense and wasn't such a pain so you know i got a lot of questions about how to do this and i just kept saying you know they kind of changed things because i was kind of working out the best way for me that i thought would work you know similar to the workflow that i had showed before and this one is it like i said i've tried using multiple instances and switching back and forth with different instances of machine and that was just kind of messy it was it was kind of clunky just like you know working with you know, MIDI control mode is kind of clunky and it kind of messes with the pad sensitivity. So I felt like this one actually just kind of using different groups as MIDI outputs and sending that back into machine kind of gives you that workflow. It's really fast because you can quickly switch between the two. If you need to go in and edit your kits or, you know, add effects or do anything you need to do that, you can quickly go over there and do it and then record. So, of course, like I said, if you got any questions, let me know. This is St. Joe, MachineTutorials.com. Peace.